Good evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome to Keeping It Real. I am your host tonight again, our second episode of Keeping It Real, and in the studio with me tonight on the controls is Mr. Lionel Ellis, and just walking in is the man himself, Champagne. I know many of you are waiting expectantly for or have been waiting expectantly for the show tonight. There's been lots of response online, lots of comments, uh, a number of different um, places. Social media was a buzz this afternoon when the promo went out. It is important and is paramount during any type of negotiations for there to be credibility on both sides of the table. And I'm sure most of you know where I'm going with this already tonight. There has been lots said lately about healthcare in St. Lucia, about St. Jude's Hospital, about the OKEU Hospital, about the length of time it has taken successive administrations to deliver on St. Jude's Hospital in the south of St. Lucia in Viewfort since the fire in 2009. There has been a lot said about the government's position, this current administration's position, about the previous administration's inability to deliver after many promises to deliver on St. Jude's Hospital. And of course, lately, the SLMDA, the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association, and a number of other organizations which have gotten into the what seems now to be a fray for the public's attention and also for convincing on who's right, who's wrong, who's indifferent. What has really caught the attention of St. Lucians over the past few days. In fact, Friday last week was a situation which occurred as a result of a meeting which had been scheduled between the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association and the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. Now it is important because there have been many interpretations and many versions of exactly what happened. But I think it's important when we delve into finding the truth or getting the facts in situations like these or like this, that we go through it methodically and step by step, you know, the old investigative process. Uh, establish a timeline of facts. And in this instance, the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association had been, I'm just getting my papers lined up here, there had been ongoing discussions with the government of St. Lucia, with the Prime Minister particularly, about the way forward for St. Lucia. As many of you may remember or recall, the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association has been around for a while now, at least 35 years according to their website. And there is a mission statement and a vision statement on their website. And I'll just, for those of you who've never been on their website, it's slmda.org. So you can fact check what's being said here tonight. And under their mission statement, it says to sustain human development in St. Lucia by continually placing the individual and collective healthcare expertise of our members at the service of the people of St. Lucia. Now, I want you to digest that. Secondly, is the vision statement. And it states, to achieve and promote excellence in medical care for the betterment of all St. Lucians. Now, I think the vision statement is where we shall start, or at least 
focus on at this point in time. You will observe from me just reading that a few seconds ago that the vision statement does not state that it is to promote excellence in medical care for the betterment of all St. Lucians after 2016. It doesn't state that it is for 2017 or 2018. It states that this is the vision of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association, period, for all St. Lucians. That suggests or clearly means that the St. Lucia Medic Medical and Dental Association is committed to health care for all St. Lucians from its inception. Not that it would be doing anything in the background, playing coy, but this is the vision statement, a definitive statement of care and attention for the health of all St. Lucians. Now, where I'm going with this is that recently in the back and forth with regard to St. Jude's Hospital, the president of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association has been asked on numerous occasions why the deafening silence of his association during the previous administration when St. Jude's Hospital, just as now, had not been delivered upon. In fact, at that time, there had been multiple promises by the Prime Minister and the Minister of Health, Alvina Reynolds, and Prime Minister Kenny Anthony about the state of St. Jude's Hospital and its progress. There had been multiple revisions of what it would cost to complete St. Jude's. We've all heard the, the figures. 20 million, 25 million, 35 million. There's a, a, a famous, now famous video circulating. It's on, on, on YouTube where Dr. Kenny Anthony at, an, at one of the multiple interviews on the premises of the construction site of St. Jude's stated that he anticipated that by the time of completion of St. Jude's Hospital, we would have received a state-of-the-art hospital and it would have cost about $60 million. And to which he further added that, you know what? I think it will have been or it would have been monies well spent. Quote from Dr. Kenny Anthony somewhere around 2015. So the question to ask now, looking at the vision statement of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association, an organization which has been around for at least 35 years, you would expect that they would be committed, that they would be resolute, that they would not be political, and that their sole interest, their sole focus would have been the health and care of all St. Lucians, regardless of the political party in office at whatever time during their tenure as the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association. So we were left to ask, based on the statement of the president of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association, the SLMDA, what was meant by the statement that the SLMDA was working in the background. This is the, this is, this is the statement of Dr. Alfonso St. Rose, that they were working in the background. Now, let me make it quite clear that the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association also, during all of this time, had at their disposal their own website on which they could make statements, they could release their own press releases, they could post whatever articles about healthcare, about negotiations, about concerns, about 
anything they wanted regarding health care in St. Lucia. But it is peculiar that for whatever reason, and again, I will direct your attention to the SLMDA website at slmda.org, the evidence that we have, how do we judge the statements that are made with the evidence that we have available? On the SLMDA website, if you go to news articles or stories, there's on the lower right-hand side of, of their screen, of, of that page, there is the archives. And the archives on many websites, for those of you who go to many websites looking up for information, there is usually a section called archives, and it indicates the number of articles over a previous period of time, whether it's months, whether it's years, or whatever period. And, you know, it just struck my attention that looking on there, at the bottom of that list is February 2014. Now, I must draw your attention again to the fact that the St. Jude's Hospital fire was in 2009. And if I am correct, that was on September the 11th, our own 9-11, if you will. The first article which shows up in, in archives, although my perusing the site in the background, I was able to find other articles, but it's neither here nor there. February 2014, there's one article. The next article is in April 2014, one article. Then we move forward to March 2015, one article, almost a whole year. Now, remember, that is the time when all the different estimates on how much St. Jude would cost, when all the estimates on when the hospital would be open were being made. Nothing. August 2015, two articles. September 2015, one article. Then between September 2015 and January 2016, there's one article in January 2016. In April 2016, after all the hullabaloo in February 2016, after the naming of the hospital and no opening, after all the concerns about the hospital, nothing in February, no concerns expressed by the SLMDA about OKEU, or for that matter, not even anything about St. Jude's Hospital. Then between April 2016, when there's only one article, the next set of postings now, you have to recall, because we have to take things in what they appear to be. We have to recall that elections were called in June, June the 6th, 2016. There were no concerns then. The government, the, Saint Lu the, the United Workers Party government, decided to halt the operations at St. Jude. There was no article, there was no expression of any concerns from the SLMDA at that time. The next articles on the SLMDA site began again after April 2016. Next articles were in March 2018. That's right, this year. Almost and for all intents and purposes, two years of absolutely no concerns, no expression of anything at all. And one is left to wonder what exactly did or does Dr. St. Rose mean by saying that they were working in the background because they did not make use of print media. There were no stories in the newspapers, there was no outrage or concerns in, on social media, there was nothing on TV, there was nothing on radio, and 
Of course, if you want to argue that possibly the previous administration may have exercised some unusual control over all these mediums, including Facebook and everything else, and prevented the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association from posting or saying anything at all on radio, TV, social media, or in the newspapers, they had their own website. And you're left to ask again that since nothing was said in 2011, 2012, 13, 14, 15, and even into 2016, what was being done right or what was being done in the background that changed so drastically from those years to 2016, 17, and now 2018 to cause the SLMDA to become so vocal? Was there any less concern for the health of St. Lucians between 2011 and 2016? Were people not dying? Was the hospital not continually being postponed for reopening? Was the amount of monies being spent not forever increasing? Now, I will leave that here for now and we will move to the government's side of this equation. And what we should all recall very soon after the 2016 elections victory of the United Workers' Party. The Alan Chastney, the Prime Minister, stated that along with other ministers, and it's the government, it was the government's position at the time, that because of the numerous delays in the operations, in the opening of St. Jude's Hospital, because of the constantly revised upwards of the amount of money it would take to complete the hospital, the numbers of allegations and questions which loomed over St. Jude's Hospital, it, it would be prudent for anyone taking up the responsibility of government and ultimately or consequently, if you will, the responsibility for St. Jude's Hospital that you know exactly what is going on in that place. It does not cost $500. And according to the information that the UWP administration has put out, that to this point in time, it has cost $138 million for the works and everything else that have surrounded St. Jude's Hospital. Now, I, I'd like to give a little analogy so people can understand the position there because it's all logical. And a number of people were saying, well, why is the hospital stopped for so long? Fix St. Jude's is a common expression that we've heard with relation to the government's position and the challenge to the government. Many of you have worked at restaurants. Many of you have worked on cash at supermarkets. Many of you have worked out of St. Lucia. And to those of you listening in the U.S. and Canada and the U.K., I know there are some people who indicated that they would stay up to listen to the show tonight in the U.K. And over there, it's now 21 minutes after midnight. Thank you very much for tuning in. The moment that you change shifts and you acquire responsibilities for whatever is handed over to you, whether it's bears, whether you're a bartender, whether you're on the cash at a supermarket, wherever you are, if you accept what is handed over to you, whether you verify it or not, at the end of your shift, you are responsible for any losses or any negatives that are resultant in the final count at the end of your shift. 
Now, we're not talking small change here, folks. We're talking about $138 million. Would any of you accept the responsibility for $138 million without knowing where that money was spent, knowing that eventually, if there was any query on the undergoings or the undertakings at St. Jude's Hospital, that you would be responsible because you did not verify what you were taking over? Is that logical? Does it make sense to you? And I have to tell you, and if you're honest with yourself, the government was prudent in its queries, and particularly in commissioning, uh, if what, what was it, uh, uh, an audit into exactly what went on. A financial audit and also a technical audit. You can't just stay on the outside and look at the hospital and figure out what was going on. You have to get the paperwork. You have to get the, the supplier's bills. You have to verify the equipment that you have in storage. You have to verify what was done on the ground. You have to verify who were paid for services. All of this to ascertain what the situation is that you are inheriting. Many people say uh, the expression is, it's your baby. Well, St. Jude's Hospital is now the baby of the United Workers' Party government. And when you acquire or when you have or when you deliver a baby, it's your responsibility now. doesn't matter who the daddy is. It's your responsibility. And if you don't find out who the daddy is, guess what? You become a single parent. And I don't believe that this administration wants to become a single parent to the tune of $138 million without knowing who the daddy is. We just had Father's Day. We talk about the situation in St. Lucia where single parent homes are a big concern because of lack of the presence of a daddy who's your daddy alan chastney who's your daddy uwp administration who's your daddy saint lucia and these are the questions we have to ask whether it is sensible that an audit two audits a financial audit and a technical audit now, what has made it even more difficult is that we're on the government side right now, okay? And these are the explanations which have been given. So, we have to take the information coming from the government as well as from the SLMDA and any of the other parties, particularly the St. Lucia Labour Party, and examine them sensibly. What was the plan? That is the question. What was the plan for St. Jude's? And apparently, according to the information from the government, there was no plan because they couldn't find it. And as a result, the government has to undertake what is, is described as and uh, obtain as-built drawings. Now, surprise, surprise, only recently I came across that very expression in looking into something. And many people don't know it. If, you, if you're not into it, you don't know what it means. Just like if you're not into mechanics or into cars, you don't know what a CV joint is. That's not part of your regular vocabulary. So, as architects are well-versed, in that field, they would know what an as-built drawing is or a construction person. I'll tell you what an as-built drawing is. An as-built drawing is where you don't have the plans for a building and you have to get an architect to come in and draw your building or your house, your structure, whatever it is, as it is built or as he finds it. 
So you have to come in and you have to figure out where all the electrical is because when you have an architectural drawing or the plans for a building, all of those things are included. The plumbing, the electrical, the, the roof, the foundation, the materials that are used, the depth of the foundation, the, the thickness of the walls, whether you use one inch steel rods or, or half an inch, all of this has to be in your architectural plans. Because acquiring a building, you need to know what its strengths are, what its weaknesses are. So for a structure as vast or as large as St. Jude's Hospital, it would be sensible, let's be sensible, if you apply for a license for a house, a building that you want to have a restaurant in or whatever, you have to present your plans to the authorities for them to see whether it's a safe building. The same thing has to be done for hospitals. And the as-built drawings for a house, according to my information when I inquired recently, about ten to fifteen thousand dollars for that to be performed. Now where I'm going with that is that lots of people have complained about what was paid for the technical audit on St. Jude's Hospital. Now we have heard that there are multiple buildings at St. Jude's. So multiple buildings would have to be all part of the as built. You have to find out the materials used in the walls, the electrical, the gas lines, the water lines. There are also uh, gas lines that are run for oxygen and other patient care. There are high voltage lines. There are low voltage lines. There are under underground foundations. There's, it's a vast expanse of property and many buildings to have your as-built drawings obtained. So if a house is going to cost you, now remember that a hospital is a totally different structure to a regular house. So you get some idea of how many people would be required to do an as-built drawing for St. Jude's and everything else. Use your imagination. That is... The, the first position of the government. And we're almost up on, we are up on the half hour and we will take a station break, Kyrie FM 93.1. And I'll be back after the break to continue with keeping it real. You know, people parley, parley, and people like to parley in St. Lucia quite a bit without getting the facts without understanding the facts and sometimes or too often ignoring the facts for whatever reasons they have. Champagne, yes, sir. how are you doing? I'm doing well. You're here tonight. I am pleased to. Well, I'm very <laughs> glad you're here. Yeah. I'm I saw you sitting back there uh, digging the music as we came into this new segment. Um, I, I chose this song to intro the, the program because it, describes how we so often are in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. So many people just talk mindlessly oh, yeah. and refuse mm -hmm. to at least... You know, it's okay if we have differing opinions. But some people are inexplicably ignorant. Oh, yeah. They deliberately not want to hear mm -hmm. the, facts the facts because they may be of a different political persuasion, of a different religious persuasion, or whatever other reasons they may have for not wanting to hear somebody else. You know, like like we say in St. Lucia, Tet, you're wed. He <laughs> wed. And with this whole back and forth, obviously there has to be a solution to the St. Jude's Hospital situation. 
And obviously, something has gone utterly wrong. Terribly wrong. With St. Jude's Hospital. Terribly wrong. It is now nine years. Yeah. Unbelievable. We have had an extended period of 2011 to 2016 of an administration that kept giving different dates, that kept giving different amounts on what it would cost us to have a state-of-the-art hospital. Now, comparison in life is one of the very neutral ways or unbiased ways of coming to a conclusion about things. And on one hand, you may have something, and on the other hand, you have something that you want to compare. Right. You're not an expert. Mm -hmm. Most of us, the majority of us, and I would say 99.9999999 times, 99% right. of the population of St. Lucia know nothing about the construction of hospitals. You think that would be a fair That's assessment? That's a fair statement. Right. I dare say that 99.9% .9 of us don't know anything, really, about fixing a car. We'd be lost. The most, most, the most that anyone out there would know, maybe change a tire, mm -hmm. maybe replace some basics, fluids with the, the basics. basics. Yeah. But when it comes to diagnosing a problem in an yeah. automobile, mm -hmm. when it comes to fixing it, when it comes to even taking it apart, mm -hmm. we're lost. I will not pretend and say that I'm a mechanic. I'm not. Exactly. And I'm if you not, come to exactly. me and say that I believe that you can do it, then you're a fool. Mm -hmm. If I tell you I can and I can't, I have no business fixing cars. But the important thing here is that we all have life's experiences. I may not be able to tell you what a piston is in a car. I may not be able to tell you what the sheeting is supposed to be in a hospital operating room. But if I go into any building, whether it's a hospital, whether it's a private house, whether it's a supermarket, and the floor is sloping yeah. to one side, you can tell. I know something's wrong. Exactly. I don't have to be a rocket scientist <laughs> exactly. to figure that out. If I'm walking through a corridor in a hospital mm -hmm. where I know people are pushed on stretchers, they're pushed in wheelchairs, mm -hmm. and a wheelchair can hardly go down oh, yeah. the corridor, something I know something is wrong. Definitely. I'm not dotish. You know? Right? If I'm driving my car, and all of a sudden I hear in, in St. Lucian on a matter pair, yeah. <coughs> Yeah, right? Yeah. If I hear that, <laughs> yeah. you know, you, I know something is wrong. Exactly. I, I don't have to know yeah, what, what the is, problem what is, exactly. but I know something is wrong. That's right. That's you know, right. if I come in here tonight and I can't hear the music, the lights are off, I can't see anybody inside there. Mm -hmm. There are no lights coming from the, the control, control board. Yeah. yeah. You think I have to be a master engineer to figure out that yeah, something, something is wrong, wrong inside here? Yeah, exactly. So the analogy I'm making here is that St. Lucians are not stupid. People are not foolish. Many people have gone to St. Jude's. As a matter of fact, many people from different walks of life in St. Lucia have been to St. Jude's. In fact, it was opened up recently, a few weekends ago. Government officials have taught the site. Architectural persons, political types mm -hmm. have taught St. Jude's. We've had experts touring the sites. We've had local experts. We've had foreign experts. We've had experts hired by the government. Mm -hmm. We've had all sorts Members of people. Of We've had members of doo -doo 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 -doo, yep. the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association. Right. In fact, in the person of, of uh, Dr. Alfonso <coughs> Centros, right. among others. Mm -hmm. And in 2017, after a visit to St. Jude's, it was caught on camera, it was That's on the right. news, it has been played over and over again. Uh -huh. It has been, his statements have been 
immortalized on YouTube, he's there forever. Mm -hmm. Once you're out on the internet, oh, yeah. that's it. You can't go back. And one of the statements he made, 2017, about a that's year it. ago, mm -hmm. that something is terribly Probably wrong not. at St. Jude's. That's right. Now, hold on a second. All, hold, 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 heard him. hold on a second. Don't rush me now. I'm, I'm right. Don't rush me. One year later, mm -hmm. there have been no changes at St. Jude. Mm -hmm. There's been no construction. Only thing is there have been a number of investigations, if you will, of critical um, observation by a number of different persons. But now, Dr. Alfonso St. Rose with the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association are convinced, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, that St. Jude's Hospital is the best thing since sliced bread. Yeah. In fact, I mean, it's, it is incredible. A statement made by the Honorable Member for Labry, yeah. Alva Baptiste, mm -hmm. that in the House of Assembly, that all they man, all they need, man, all they need to do is just get some chemical yeah. and clean up the place. Imagine that. That is the high science position of an elected member elected in our member. House of Parliament. Yep. The fix to St. Jude's is to get some chemical. So I guess you get some bleach, mm -hmm. you get some pot pourri cleaner, yeah. make yeah. the place smell nice, smell nice. and, and you have a hospital. Okay. Yeah. Operating room, functional, emergency ward, yes. functional, everything. I mean, is this, <laughs> is, is this the level of intelligence of St. Lucian's that this pash-pash brushing aside of the seriousness of the situation with St. Jude's, is this what an elected representative really expects to fly to be accepted by the people of St. Lucia? I mean, seriously. But you know, you, if, if I may, you made a relevant, relevant statement. In, um, here you have the doctor stating in 2017 that something is terribly wrong. In 2017, less than a year ago, with St. Jude's. And one year later, has a whole different concept of St. Jude's. And nothing changed. And nothing changed. There was no additional structure. There was no construction. There was nothing. I could imagine why. <laughs> well, why do you think? Well, you don't know. Well, I, I, well, it's, it's left to it's anybody's own, wild imagination. Hey, well, I have my own personal <laughs> opinions on, on why. You want but to share your opinions? <laughs> I'll let you go deeper into that. Or the you want me to get I'll a let you go day. deeper and I'll tell you why. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Why? That is the question, a big question that needs to be answered by many people. But, you know, listen. Let's 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 get let's get real. There have been many accusations. We in Saint Lucia. Let's let's keep it real. Mm -hmm. No pussyfooting around here tonight. Let's keep it real, like the name of the show says. There have been many accusations, and many people are of the opinion that at least the executive or certain members of the executive of the Saint Lucia Medical. And dental association. You know, some people call it the Saint Lucia Mental. Oh yeah, I've heard that association. But yeah, but we're not going you know, that way. Well, That's you know, not what people, it is. You know, in Saint Lucia, people like yeah, to twist things around. around. But the yeah. Saint Lucia Medical and Dental yeah. Association. A number of people say they're being political. Now, why would they say that? Well, again, we have to go by the evidence that we have. Since 2011 to 2016. Mm, nothing was said. The Medical and Dental Association, which has committed themselves in their vision statement to achieve and promote excellence in medical care for the betterment of all St. Lucians. So again, I ask the question, where is and where was the excellence in what was happening at St. Jude's? So before the break... I was on a, a train of thought there. I said comparing one mm -hmm. object or something to another. We have the OKEU Hospital, which on the 21st of June of uh, February, 
2016, had an elaborate presentation and speeches and everything by the former administration the day before our 38th and uh, 37th anniversary of independence for the naming of the OKEU hospital. Now, I've been over there. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's world class. Mm -hmm. The OKEU hospital, to steal a phrase from Dr. Kenny Anthony, a is a state-of-the-art hospital. Mm -hmm. And anyone who has not been there, I encourage you to have a look. Have a look at the OKEU hospital. Now, the OKEU hospital, according to the information we have available, cost 160, 163 or 168 million EC dollars. Mm -hmm. Fully constructed, all roads done, all equipment outfitted, whatever was needed. We may have a call coming in. Good evening. Thank you for calling. Hello? Hello? Yes, good evening. Um, you keep on saying extended from 2011 to 2016. Why? Why not? You said 2011 to 2016. Yes. Who was in, in, in um, ruling from 2011 to 2016? Who was in, in office? Yes. The St. Lucia Labour Party. From what date in 2011? Up to in November. November 2011. November 20th was election. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You didn't, you didn't really become an official mm -hmm. government not until December around the fifth day. Mm -hmm. okay. You then have to go into power in, in, in January. Okay. Then you would have to be, after the budget, then you would have to be seeking your finance, all sorts of things. You come in for government that started a hospital from 2010 the whole of 2010 the whole of 2011 mm -hmm. you now you you have to pick up from there so you would have to find your budget it's a whole lot of things to go on so why now is you saying it's like it's only them that have to, it's, it's like you're saying it's only they are to blame caller it's, caller hold on a second caller not, hold on a second hold on a second you see that is exactly what I was saying earlier about the prudency or the prudence of this administration. When you take over, it is your responsibility to take over and find out exactly what is going on. However, we do also have information from the remaining year because you, you, you will recall if you do the lady king whatever name something king Santa, Santa, Santa king there, there was a whole report detailed Ho hold on caller hold on a second eh? you you getting ahead of no, of no, everything no. you're getting ahead because we have not mentioned anything regarding Shanta king yes. or any report of the sort yes. you you getting ahead of the game here yes, sir, but i heard you talk about the audit the technical but yes today, like today i haven't there have not been nothing on the audit of the technical people need Ab absolutely, absolutely, well, caller. And you will recall, you will recall that the Prime Minister, as well as the Minister Guy Joseph, mm -hmm. has said that the Prime Minister will be making a statement on the state of healthcare in St. Lucia and what the government has decided. Um, it was supposed to have been within. A period of time I can tell you that that is coming shortly but there's, there's always something coming shortly and it's never arriving well well you well you know what yeah, caller you know what caller Mr. If Guy Joseph is always the one who is in control taking charge and talking before even the Prime Minister talks so he's always contradicting he says one thing the Prime Minister would you like to give us an example of a contradiction Mr. Guy Joseph will give one pr price. The Prime Minister will give one. Mr. Guy Joseph said to the, to the, just tonight they said 130. You said 138. The Prime Minister said 138 at one time. You said 130. Miss, Miss Mary Isaac said 170. So it's a whole, 
you, 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 you all are confusing people and because people are hearing so many things. Figures are branding here and them. This is saying they, that is saying they, all sorts of things. How can people believe what they are hearing? Now, now, caller, caller, mm. let me ask you a question. Mm. Where do you think all of the confusion in those prices is coming from? Do you think it is because, hold on, do you think it is because there, there has been or there was such accurate record keeping that these figures should be able to be deciphered easily by any accountant? Or do you believe that it is because there has not been proper record keeping that there have been phantom companies, that there have been mysterious accounting, which over time a number of expenses and costs to the St. Jude Hospital have been discovered as the audits have gone along. But why Isn't it logical? To let the audit and the technical, the same way Shanta King report there is in detail, let the audit and the technical report so people can compare the two. Because it's, you, can, you can say what you want there. You're both parties. So, so you, so, 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 so caller, caller. So many games are playing with people. So caller, which, so caller, listen here for a second. What was stated in Chanta King's report? It, I heard it in detail. It you heard it where? It's on the, on the news. The, it was shown on TV. Okay, so, so what was it? You've been able to quote figures. What, what figures are you quoting that are in contradiction? Okay, I can tell you that now when it's there, it's there to be... No, 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 caller, caller. On, on, caller, caller, caller. This program is called Keeping It Real. But that's why I'm keeping it real. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you you have if you're going to challenge figures that are being given and you want to quote I tell you figures I heard hold on a second, hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep it real. Mm -hmm. If you're going to quote figures and dispute figures and say that there is other information, then you should be able to quote these as well because right. you're attempting you're attempting to discount the information that the government is putting out. Um, figures branded by the members of the government. Everybody give a different figure. Now, the, the other thing of Chantix Has that not happened over time? Yeah, but I... I, I okay, I, so let me ask you a question. Let, Hold on a second. Uh -huh. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. In 2015, when Dr. Kenny Anthony gave an interview, mm -hmm. I'm almost certain that you saw that if you, as... as concerned about what has been happening with St. Jude. He stated on one occasion that it would be $25 million. Then he stated 35 Then he stated $40 million. And then he said, you know what? By the end of this hospital being constructed, we would have spent about $60 million. And you know what? I think it would have been money well spent. Why do you think that the price kept changing over and over? All parties right there on your program. All parties, both sides, there get it real. Let everybody state their facts. Everything right there. Well, well, you know what, caller? I think the result of the technical audit. That's how we can get it real. We the the result of the technical audit and the financial audit will be released, and then we will hear the 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 the, the definitive description. Thank you very much for calling the show. Thank you very much. Stay tuned to keep it real, keeping it real on Kyrie FM. So, as we were saying... You notice, if I may jump in, if I may jump in, you notice she, her emphasis was placed on 2011. Mm -hmm. and, and you know that's during the time the United Workers Party government was in office prior to, you know, St. Jude's, and then the United Workers Party got out of office in November of 2011. Mm -hmm. But then she had nothing to say about 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Everything that was said, she was placing the whole focus on 2011. Well, you know, you know, you know, as the name of the program of this program suggests, and as we will continue doing, we'll keep it real. But you know, it's very nice that somebody could call in with information, yeah. and we get the opportunity to give the information that we have, and we can have a respectful dialogue, yes, even if she did not agree or had questions about what our position is. She was respectful, and thank you very much for that, ma'am. 
Thank you for calling. Keeping it uh, real. Hello, good day. Uh, good night. Good night, uh, sir. Atashi. Uh, this is Calix George Jr. Let me this is, this is, hold on a second, hold on one second. This is Norbert Williams, citizen of St. Lucia. Yes, Mr. Norbert Williams, citizen of St. Lucia. Thank you. And attaché to the Prime Minister. No, I'm, I'm not in the capacity uh, operating here in the capacity oh. as attaché. Okay, I'm, I'm sure, hold on a second, hold on a second, Mr. George. I'm sure you are very well aware that I have been outspoken on a number of different issues before I was in the employ of the government. My, my advocacy and my speaking out on issues of pertinence to St. Lucians, whether in St. Lucia or out of St. Lucia, has been for many years. So this is nothing unique that is happening here tonight. So, but thank you very much for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. No, I, I appreciate that, your candor. Um, and I'm just introducing myself as a citizen of St. Lucia as well. Okay. However, I am certain, um, given your other hats, that you have access to um, documents, which are, in fact, in the public domain, nonetheless, um, in, with respect to the issue of price and cost. And the last caller was spot on when she said that the government has been quoting a variety of figures. Uh, re with respect to the Why do you think that's the case? Hospital. Why do you think that's well, the case? First, first and foremost, I would want to quote the, uh, the estimates of St. Lucia for 2018-2019, mm -hmm. right, under the Ministry of Economic Development, which states that the amount of money spent thus far on the St. Jude Hospital Reconstruction Project is $96 million dollars mm -hmm. right and i'd also like to quote the government audit report which was prepared uh the interim audit report which was prepared by a, a consulting firm mm -hmm. right which states that the amount of money spent in terms of contracts or in terms of work certified and paid is 82 million dollars mm -hmm. and it goes fair to say that the amount certified but pending payment mm -hmm. is two million seven seventy three thousand two hundred and sixty nine dollars and ninety four cents, which would mean therefore that you have about eighty four million dollars worth of work done. No, it does not. No, it does not. You you so, use yes. oh, you no. And, and hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on. Before we go ahead, before we go ahead and get muddled, let's just sort out something that you said. You use a very important word, certified. That suggests that there are works and contracts which still remain uncertified. Therefore, but I can give it to you. There, no, there were works that were certified and paid. Yes, and that was a value of two million dollars. Yes, right. And that was and that you was, said certified, that was right? From twenty. You sorry? said you said certified. The two yes. examples you gave were certified. Yes, but what I'm saying correct. to you is, what I am saying to you, is the use, your use, and the use of the word certified in the estimates are very specific. No, this is not the use of the word certified in the estimates. Uh, certified with respect to a contract, yeah. right, means work that has been done and they have been certified by the consulting engineer. Right. In other words, that the works have been done. And they have been done over but but if you were paying attention now, earlier, if was, if, now, if hold on, was, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're ignoring what I said before to push your point. What, right? what I said earlier is that the accounting, the paperwork, the accountability for a lot of what went on at St. Jude's is up in smoke. It is not available. There that's is no true. accountability. But that's not true, Mr. Williams. Why you, you say that? You cannot be coming on radio and making such outlandish statements. No, it's not. A, how do you know it's outlandish? How do you know that? The last caller rightfully said, and you refuse to take the point. That even no, let's stick with your point. Audit, one, one at a time. Stick with your point. Before, how do you know that it is outlandish? What information do you have? Give us the information you have. Mr. Williams. Yes. You are therefore saying that the Ministry of Finance, that the Budget Office, that all these agencies within the Ministry of Finance, right, are so far off, right, in terms of their accounting of that project, that they would be, that they would be saying that it, they spent that for $96 million 
and the government is going and quoting 118 million. And I'm, I'm going to explain to you where the government is getting that 118 million dollars from because it is mentioned in the report that 118 in which report? In which in report? Same, in the same interim audit report which the government spent nearly a million dollars on. It says very clearly, and if you want, I can even tell you the page, right? I think 67 and 69, right? That the, the amount of the contracts was 118 million. So in other words, let's say you want to build a home, and the, 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 you get a contractor, and the contractor says, okay, I'm going to build your, my, the home for a million dollars, right? But halfway in the project, he may have only spent $500,000. Or three quarters of the way, he may have only spent seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Or three quarters of the way, million, or three quarters of the way, million, he could have spent double the amount of money. But it is clearly not the case. Why? Because because if that is the case, you would therefore have, have contractors right now, right? Well, like you're talking. Like you Obi Sadu would be at you right now, saying that you owe them money. Hold on, hold on, a, no, 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 no. Hold on, once, hold on a second, that, hold on a second here. You, you are discussing this issue in a perfect environment where everything was done correctly, where everything was done to the T, where all T's were crossed, all I's were dotted. The fact remains, the unequivocal fact remains that this was not done. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. You're not going to hog the lines tonight. I appreciate you calling, but you know, your your attempt to capitalize on what's going on there is not totally accurate. I think you are a bit disingenuous in trying to totally ignore what I am saying. The fact remains that the reason why the cost of St. Jude's continue morph, continued morphing and changing over years was because there were many things that were unaccounted for. There were many Activities which went on with that hospital, which did not conform to the proper processes that you would expect from a hospital being built. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I hope that you can call some other time. Let's give another person a chance to call. Um, I'd just like our callers to know as well that you can email us if you have questions or comments about the topic of discussion tonight. The email address is info at keepingitreal.lc, K-E-E-P-I-N-G-I-T-R-E-A-L dot L-C, info at keepingitreal.lc. Um, Champagne, what do you think about that? Uh, you know, I like um, people calling with figures mm -hmm. and discussing. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong in us disagreeing. And the angle that uh, Mr. George is coming with is... On a perfect basis. The construction on a, on a, was perfect. On a, on Everything a perfect. was done properly. You, but you know what? Yeah. If it was perfect, yeah. the hospital would have been It would done. have been finished. And I could understand what he's trying to say based on a perfect and a completion of the hospital. But then you have a hospital that's But ap apparently, complete. apparently, he was hoodwinked like a lot of people too. You know, the monies that were spent, whether he wants to whether he wants to accept the amounts that were, were, were placed, whether he wants to accept the amounts that are quoted or whatever, what we have to accept is that something went terribly wrong at St. Jude's. And it wasn't two bags of cement. No. It was to the tune of millions of dollars. That is why it's not going to cost the government $2 million to fix St. Jude's at this time. In fact, getting back to my point, we have the OKEU, which costs $163, $168 million, somewhere around there. And, and before you go, you know that the, the two callers would like accuracy. They, they, because the lady before, Mr. George, kept asking about numbers changing, figures changing. I mean... <laughs> The audit is going to come out because at the moment we, I know me for sure wouldn't know the accuracy on the amount of money that was spent you because, but we know it's well over a hundred million dollars. But, yeah, but before, we, okay, before, yeah. before we go to the break, for those who've been down to St. Jude's, we, we've heard the government say that 
the amount, wh whatever it is. Let, let, let's, let's just be a little flexible here. Mm -hmm. Whether it's $118 million, whether it's $138 million. The OKEU outfitted, ready to operate in service for all intents and purposes. Twice it's open. Size. Huge hallways, high ceilings, enough space in the corridors for canteen. canteen, everything operational, $168 million. We have St. Jude's Hospital, which has been described as barely 50% complete. Yeah. Costing $138 million. Yeah. Forget that. $118 million. Forget that. Let's say $100 million. Yeah. Yeah. Forget that. Let's, Let's say, say $90 50. million. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Still not complete. The government is saying at 50% complete mm -hmm. yeah. to redo St. Jude's Hospital, to complete it, will cost at least $100 million. Now, when we complete St. Jude's, it still, as far as I'm concerned, will be nothing compared to the OKEU hospital at $168 million. And we would have spent, at the low-end figure that Mr. Calix George suggested, $90 million. It would have cost $190 million and still not be up to par with OKEU. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Thank you very much for joining us again. Keeping it real on Kyrie FM 93.1, and we have a call. Good evening, caller. Go ahead. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Good evening. Fine, thank you. Thanks for calling. Guy Joseph. Good evening, sir. Um, you know, I've, I've been following your program, and I am a bit taken aback that people like colleagues George Jr., wasn't he attached to the former prime minister? He was. I think he was his attaché. Speech writer and everything. Yes. So I would assume, I would assume from that position, he would be very knowledgeable about what happened at St. Jude. So rather than him calling the media and trying to ask questions about what figures have been put out there, why didn't he tell us what happened on the day work? at St. Jude Hospital. Why didn't he call and say, look here, when I was attached to the Prime Minister, because he could quickly brand you as the attache to the present Prime Minister. That's right. Why wouldn't he call and say, look here, I can account for this and I can account for that that happened at St. Jude under the watch of my former Prime Minister. Now, he said about the accounts, and he know well that he's lying to the whole nation. And I've said it several times. There was no accounts done for St. Jude for the nine years of this project. The Ministry of Economic Development never prepared a financial statement on St. Jude. So when they want to talk about the Shanta King report, and your previous scholar who called it, the lady who always seemed to present herself as being apolitical. People must stop playing games in this country. And like you said, they need to keep it real. And if they cannot keep it real, we have to help them to keep it real. That's right. By giving to them the facts about what has happened at St. Jude. Now, they complain about the different numbers. You will always get different numbers quoted based on the point being made. So in the initial technical audit, what was found by the technical audit is that $118 million worth of contracts have been issued, and then an $82 million of this have been paid, and the balance some of it is awaiting payment. Then you have another situation where a forensic audit is done. Now, the technical audit could not pick up everything that transpired at St. Jude because the, the technical audit was not a financial audit. 
So you may hear the Prime Minister quoting figures that comes from the financial audit, the forensic uh, audit of St. Jude. You may hear me quoting figures from what comes from the technical audit. So you may find that depending on which report is being quoted, that different figures may be given. They mentioned the Santa King report. The Santa King report says that 98 million or how much have been spent to date. But if that is the case, based on the Santa King report, it is clear to us that there is there are discrepancies in all of the figures given. Because up to now, we've not been able to quantify everything that transpired at St. Jude. Because there are things that you are finding out as you go along. Mm -hmm. So, they need to understand. The issue here is not whether one million was spent, or whether there's a difference in figures quoted. And they want to make it look like, because Minister Isaac gives a number from one perspective, and Minister Joseph gives a number, that's myself, and, and the Prime Minister gives a number, that this is where the confusion is. That is not where the confusion is at St. Jude. The confusion at St. Jude has to do with the, the level at which this project was implemented under the Labour Party. <clears throat> and there were no issues with the project leading up to the end of 2011. I, I have come to the House of Parliament, and if it can be proven that we have lied to the Parliament of St. Lucia, we can be taken to task and asked to withdraw what we have said. I quoted every single contract that was issued and the amount. So tell them. I'm not afraid of putting what I say on the record. So when you, when, you, when you put that on the record in the House, were you challenged about it? Well, when you make minister's statement, you cannot be challenged mm -hmm. on a minister's statement. Mm -hmm. But if it is proven, if it can be proven that the information given is inaccurate, I could be held in contempt of, of what, I have presented in the House. I could be called before the committee to be disciplined for misleading the, the House. house. Right. So why don't they tackle it from there? If they are saying that the information that we have given is not accurate, then I'm giving them that as a basis. Then the lady said to you, bring all the parties on the show and let them answer the question. I have asked how many times have I asked That's for right. a debate? J just on recently. To, to say to all the people who are concerned, don't hide behind fake names on social media. Don't hide behind calling radio stations and afraid to identify who you are. And I've said to them, I don't send anybody to do my work for me. I do my work myself. So they can call all the names they want about. You see, because... No, but... And I, I love your program because it is keeping it real. Right. It is time in St. Lucia, if UWP messes up, I expect UWP people to tell UWP, you are messing up this country but, and you are not doing what you are but, doing. But Mr. Minister, I think one of the first acts of this government, when uh, soon after elections and during the first parliament of St. Lucia, that the Crown Proceedings Act, if I am correct, mm -hmm. was amended and it was, it was stipulated there that there would be no statute of limitations for the prosecution of any government minister or public official, if who I recall correctly, who is yes. found to be corrupt. So yes. in yes. essence, if anyone in this Alan Chastney-led administration were to be found corrupt mm -hmm. 20 years down the road or god forbid two weeks from today but whatever it is there is no statute of limitations now on the prosecution of any 
government official. And that, I think, to the people of St. Lucia, should say a lot that this administration is committed to transparency and upholding the rule of law in St. Lucia. And I was the most vocal person on this. And I looked at the members opposite and I said to them, y'all always want me. Y'all always accuse me of being corrupt. Y'all always accuse me. I am the one supporting 100% the passage of this bill. That means if you get into office 20 years from now, That's right. I am passing a law that you can come after me for anything I would have done. So, so at the end of the day, for people to even begin to think, and you know, these are the superficial discussions that are taking place in this country. Why politicians can do the things they do and get away with it. Because when you tell me an administration up over a project like this, under the office of the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the then Prime Minister, Kenny Anthony, was the one with full responsibility for St. Jude. He was the one who signed every direct award. Not one single contract under St. Jude went for tender. Now, these same people, I signed some direct awards on the, on the, um, when I was acting Prime Minister for the Ministry of Communications and Work, which was sent. Contracts that did not even amount to ten to to three or four million dollars maybe the contracts are there that I I don't want to be accurate on the figures but, because but Mr. Minister M Mr. Minister, not not to yes. cut you short, but I think you could educate the people of St. Lucia here for a moment because I think there has been a lot of disingenuous statements made by the other side with regard to direct awards and the, the the fact remains that direct awards are not exclusive to the united workers party administration in fact there but are I, rules i am just telling you that the whole of st jude in one day i read it in parliament the former prime minister gave about three direct awards the same day amounting to 10 or 12 million dollars on the st jude project but if you if you can educate our listeners on keeping it real because we want to keep it real here and we want to educate our people listening out there okay. how what is the process for the for a direct award the process for a direct award must be where the line ministry so if it's the ministry of infrastructure or the ministry of health or whichever ministry would write to the office of the Prime Minister. This letter is not written by a minister. This letter is written by the accounting officer for the ministry, which is the permanent secretary. Would write a letter to the Prime Minister or whoever the Minister of Finance is at the time, requesting that a contract be awarded to a particular firm or individual in the sum of the particular amount and they would usually state the reasons why they are requesting the direct award because of the urgency of the work or because um, <clears throat> it, it is something that they, they chose not to go out for, um, for tender because of time constraints and everything. And I mean, even on the CDP, a simple project like CDP, you know how many direct awards Dr. Anthony signed on the mm -hmm. CDP leading up to the last election? All the projects, the entire hundred plus million dollars mm -hmm. on St. Jude was mm -hmm. all direct awards. Direct awards. Now, now, after this has been sent to the Prime Minister or, or by the, the Permanent Secretary, what what does cabinet discuss this what happens then no that does not come to cabinet the cabinet has no say in direct award mm. direct so, award is purely the prerogative of the minister of finance okay so only the minister of finance so so, so then an, an individual that, an individual minister cannot award himself a, a direct award to someone? No. No minister in government 
can issue a direct award to anybody. And then also, that whoever the Prime Minister is, whether it's the actual Prime Minister or an acting Prime Minister, mm -hmm. for signature, whoever it is occupying the, the office of Prime Minister at the time has no choice but to sign. It is not him awarding it, but just going through the motions of authorizing the direct award. No, it is not that the Prime Minister does not have a choice. The Prime Minister can refuse to sign right. any direct award that he chooses right. not to sign. Right. If he is not satisfied that adequate information has been right. given to him to justify the decision for a direct award, he can refer it back to the Ministry of Finance, he would refer it to the, the PS of the relevant ministry and say, we need additional information right. in order to proceed with right. this direct award. Right. Or for the following reasons, or he does not even have to give any reason. Mm -hmm. He can choose not to approve a direct award. Okay. Okay. So going back to St. Jude, as you were saying. Mm. No, but what, what our people must understand is that that an atrocity was done against the people of St. Lucia in this St. Jude project. This St. Jude project will go down in history as one of the worst ever implemented projects in the history of this country. And for people to find petty political reasons to justify the behavior and what happened there? And I am telling you, politicians are not the only ones to blame for this. There are lots of public servants and other persons who are charged with certain responsibilities in the process, who failed this country miserably as being the persons who over, to oversee this project. You have the project manager in the person of Shanta Singh being paid. You had a consultant in the person of Mandy Singh. You had several contractors engaged in that project. And there are things that I know about the project that I cannot see. Because as a responsible minister of government, I cannot go and speculate on things. Right. But go and ask anybody who lives around Central. Anybody you have who's a friend who lives in the general area where St. Jude is, and ask them how many times truckloads of material came into St. Jude during the day and in the night they left. Hmm. We've, heard, we've heard lots of those stories, Mr. People, Minister. I go down there and people tell me, you don't know the half of what happened at St. Jude. But you see, the problem is people don't want to be involved. People will not say anything about this thing. But for all of this to have gone on, while the people of Viewfort continue to suffer without a hospital being completed, and for members of parliament on the opposition side now, who was in government for five years, to feel comfortable with themselves, that they are satisfied that they did the best that they could, tells me that there's nothing I can give these people to do for me. And, and the thing is that... Two years, for my two years in government, I am disappointed with myself that I have not been able to do more with St. Joe. I am disappointed that I have not been able to finish that project. And it's, it's not through any fault of mine, but I still feel responsible because I have been elected to an office. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not about passing the buck and saying a oh, Labour Party did this and I'm not responsible. I have my share of responsibility as the Minister because I really feel that if I have listened to myself from the inception and if I've listened to the Prime Minister more so and we have gone ahead and, and gone straight and realized that, look it, we cannot do this thing the way we want to do it. Let's just do what needs to be done for a hospital in this house. By now we may have finished, or we may have been closer to finish. But then you would but, have had the responsibility of everything that would have gone wrong after that. 
No, no, I'm not talking about the existing facility. Uh-huh. You know. I'm, I'm talking about making a quick decision that, look, if that cannot work, let's just do it. But we've delayed on this because we have tried to find every avenue to finish St. Jude that is there. I have brought in close to a dozen of experts, and some of them, I send them down there with other people. I don't go with them. Hoping that they would come back and tell me, okay, we can do this and we can do that. And everyone who does a walk through the hospital would come back and tell us, look here, I'm not putting my signature on anything pertaining to this being a hospital. I don't want to identify with this. If somebody else can do it, let them do it. Well, thank you very much for calling, Mr. Minister. That was the Honorable Guy Joseph. Um, Mr. Minister, before you go, um, can we extend an invitation to you at some point to come into the studios on keeping it real and have a nice chat about your work and the issues confronting your administration in St. Lucia? I would love to do that. And I would love to come and discuss that matter with the Medical and Dental Association. So maybe when you're inviting me, you should invite the medical and them. I, I think I think them. I think if anyone, particularly Dr. Alfonso St. Rose, is listening now, because I'm sure almost the the entire population of St. Lucia is listening, because the promos went out this afternoon. If you're listening, Dr. St. Rose, you you heard it right here. The minister. It's because because let me tell you why I'm saying this, um, Mr. Williams. Because it cannot be right that people will use their office and their influence in this country to mislead so many people. They always tell me, you don't have no expertise in this. I know what I have expertise in, and I know what I don't have expertise in. But the difference with me is I know what I don't know. But too many of these people don't know what they don't know. And that is the problem. So they think that so when I don't know things, I look for the expert to know. So I want to know which hospital expert they have brought to St. Lucia to advise them. So if I am badly advised, I am badly advised by hospital experts, mm-hmm. not by engineers, not by civil work engineers who want to play or architects who may be able to draw a plan who can advise me on what to do with a hospital. And if they think that FDL was the one who advised us on the hospital, they are so wrong. Because when the presentation was made on the findings of the technical audit, it was done by a hospital expert from Barbados and from Italy. These were the two people who presented to us. So I know the value of the report I have there. This is not a Gilbert Fontenat report. This is a report with the signature of hospital experts that are reputable in this region and internationally. And when people will call that into question and take what somebody else tells them because it is politically convenient to attack this government on it, I would love to have them. I would love to have John Peters, who was the one who went there and said that the hospital can be done for the range of between 50 and $5 million. I would love him to be part of the discussion because they cannot use the influence that they have to do such wrong to the people of St. Lucia, to make the people of St. Lucia believe that this government has some data as to why they do want to finish the hospital. Well, thank that you. That cannot be right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for calling. We appreciate um, you taking time off to shed some light on this ongoing situation. We extend that invitation to you to come to the studios and discuss a little further sometime in the future. Whenever okay. you're ready, you can get in touch with me. We have to take... Uh, commercial break right now and we'll be right back thank you for calling comes a refreshing situation which occurred last week friday Mm -hmm. at the prime minister's office now remember that i said about keeping things the st lucia medical and dental association 
were at the Prime Minister's office on Friday. They did not get to see the Prime Minister. But why did that happen? And I have some communications here between the Prime Minister and the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association. Now, I would like you all to listen carefully. On the 23rd of May, 2018, that's uh, just about a month ago, a letter was sent from the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association under the signature of Dr. Alfonso St. Rose, president of the SLMDA. And I will read it for you. It says, Dear Prime Minister, Re-National Healthcare Crisis. Now remember what I said earlier, that 2011 to 2018, the healthcare crisis that we have now existed and was even in, as far as I'm concerned, a worse state than it is today because the OKEU was not open. Mm -hmm. But a letter is sent from the SLMDA, which existed back then. So a letter is sent on the 23rd of May, 2018. It says, Dear Prime Minister, re-national healthcare crisis. Further to our meetings. So... Dr. Alfonso St. Rose is alluding to the fact that, there were, meetings that there were meetings between the Prime Minister and the, the executive of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association, which means that the Prime Minister was not averse to discussing the issues of healthcare in St. Lucia with the SLMDA. So he says, further to our meetings with you on the caption subject, please find enclosed a copy of the position paper of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association, setting out our views on the health care crisis in St. Lucia. We still await communication from the cabinet appointed committee, which you indicated had already been established. We look forward to meeting with the committee and welcome dialogue with you soonest. Signed, Dr. Alfonso St. Rose, President of the SLMDA. Now, we have a response from the Prime Minister. Now, this letter here sounds cordial. It acknowledges the fact that, that the there has been dialogue yeah. between the Prime Minister and yeah. the SLMDA. And that the SLMDA is looking forward For to a continued right. dialogue. Now we have June the 6th, 2018, from the office of the Prime Minister. It says, Dear Dr. St. Rose, Re-National Healthcare Crisis. I am directed by the Honorable Prime Minister to acknowledge receipt of your letter dated May the 23rd, 2018. That's that no, letter that's I just one. read. Mm -hmm. Outlining the views of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association on the status of healthcare services in St. Lucia. The Prime Minister is currently out of state on official government business and has agreed to facilitate a meeting with your membership, mm -hmm. not with the you. executive with your membership on Friday, June the 22nd, 2018 at 10.30 a.m. to discuss the proposals put forward by the SLMDA in its position paper submitted under cover of your letter of May the 23rd, 2018. The Prime Minister looks forward to the continued engagement of the SLMDA as the government moves forward in tackling the serious and urgent challenges of the nation's healthcare services, we await confirmation of your availability. Yours sincerely. That's from Cabinet Secretary. Right. This letter went out 16 days, two weeks and two days 
before the meeting which the Prime Minister requested of the SLMDA and its membership. membership. Not the executive, yeah. the membership. Now, before we get any further, there have been challenges that, oh, who, well, let me just put, let's just keep it real. Real. <clears throat> oh, who the hell the Prime Minister thinks he wants to bypass? We are the duly elected representatives of the association. That's not his words. That's just me yeah, paraphrasing I know. it. I know. And many people have argued that the bargaining body for the SLMDA is the executive and who does the Prime Minister think he is to ask for an audience or to demand an audience with the general membership. Now, in getting my information together for the show, I thought it was of paramount importance to verify whether this had happened before whether it's something that is allowed to happen, whether it's something that's a no-no, whether it should not have happened at all. Let's see what has happened. And very quickly, I recalled, I think sometime in February or January this year, that the Prime Minister had a meeting with the general membership of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force has a welfare committee, mm -hmm or, 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 or association, there was no problem with them for the Prime Minister to meet the body. The SLHTA has an executive which speaks on behalf of its members. The Prime Minister has met with the general membership of the SLHTA. The, the Chamber of Commerce has an executive. The Prime Minister has met with the executive. And recently he met with the general membership of the the chamber of commerce and i dare say that other prime ministers have done the same so the question i am forced to ask is what is the aversion what is so bad that the prime minister would like to meet with the membership mm -hmm. the response from the slmda was that they would attend the meeting and the inference was from that statement or that acceptance was that the membership would be the ones attending. As far as I understand, when a question was asked the day before on how many people would be attending, the information was that 10 members would be attending. The Prime Minister was of the opinion then that he would have liked to meet, and the request was to meet with the general membership of the SLMDA and that 10 persons coming was not a reasonably representative number of the general membership and as a result he would postpone the meeting and another date when more of the general membership would have been available he would facilitate in meeting with them. Although belatedly on the morning of the 22nd that's last week Friday when the meeting was supposed to have been held a call was made to Dr. St. Rose at 9.23 in the morning. The meeting was scheduled for 10.30. He was called at 9.23 and informed of what I just said that the meeting would have been postponed because there were, were not enough members because the anticipation was once the numbers would have been informed to the Prime Minister's office, they would decide exactly where the meeting would be held. Mm -hmm. And that's a full hour ahead. So he was called at 9.23, an hour and seven minutes yeah. before the meeting was supposed to take place. Although he had been informed, Dr. Alfonso Centros and other members of the executive turned up at the Prime Minister's office at 10 a.m. At 10 a.m. What was the purpose for appearing at that time if you had already been informed mm -hmm. that the meeting was off? All fair and square. There was a little uncertainty as to what they would do. Of course, the professionals that they are, the Prime Minister's office extends the courtesies yeah. to all persons who are in the office of the Prime Minister and who have been invited to the office of the Prime Minister. The information coming to me in my investigations for this show is that the general membership of the SLMDA were not informed of the meeting. That's right. right? And I have had conversations with a number of doctors. I have had 
This is not hearsay. I did. And my information was that they knew nothing about the letter which the Prime Minister of St. Lucia or his office had forwarded seeking the meeting from the 6th of June. Two weeks and two days, 16 days in advance. So the question then is, why was that information withheld from the general membership of the SLMDA? But going even further, we have what I would kind of melodramatically describe as some sinister motives. Because, you know, in this day and age, information is key. And whilst the doctors of the executive of the SLMDA were at the Prime Minister's office, they were informed that the Prime Minister would not, was not present. He was elsewhere because the meeting had been cancelled. Right. And a message went out via WhatsApp from at least one member of the SLMDA to the press, the media in St. Lucia. And I have, you know, I have a copy of that message which went, which went out via WhatsApp. And the message says, and I will read it to you. Let me just bring it up here. Now, all's well and good with the SLMDA. Although belatedly, they have been informed that the Prime Minister is not present and that the meeting is off because he expected a larger representative number. Message to the press. Security may be removing, removing medical and dental association from PM's office in a bit. PM refused to meet SLMDA delegation. I've been told to help to inform media to be at the entrance of the PM's office as soon as possible for a story. What does that mean? Was the executive of the SLMDA, after being informed that the meeting was off, was it their intention to create some incident yep. in the Prime Minister's office to get them physically removed to create That's an right. uproar? That's right. What That's was the right. purpose of that? Now, I think the general membership needs to ask the executive. I think it's prudent. If you claim to represent an organization, then that organization needs to hold your feet to the fire and ask you yeah. what that message to the press was supposed to mean on their behalf. Yeah. Because if you insist that the prime minister cannot have a meeting with the general membership, that you represent them, then your behavior in the prime minister's office and anywhere else representing your general membership should be exemplary. What exactly was this to mean? So, you see, information is what sets the record straight. Yep. Now, enough said about that incident. Let the general membership ask the questions that they need to ask. And let us move on for a bit. In the position paper which is referred to, now, People of St. Lucia, I'd like you to pay close attention to my voice at this time. In the position paper presented to the government, because the SLMDA executive is speaking on behalf of the membership. So they made reference to the position paper. Now, the, the SLMDA executive cannot call foul and they cannot say that they are victims of a, a, a discrimination or that they are victims of arrogant behavior without putting all the cards on the table, without being upfront about everything that happened. Now, the statement of the SLMDA, the vision statement, and I will go back to that again, on their website at slmda.org states to achieve and promote excellence in medical care for the betterment of all St. Lucians. Now, a lot of the hue and cry of St. Lucians over the past few years were about the imposition of VAT. And there is quite a bit of consensus around St. Lucia 
that the imposition of VAT, particularly at 15%, has contributed to the demise of many businesses and individuals in St. Lucia. Jobs. That's for sure. This current administration, the UWP administration, made it part of their campaign, and it was included in the manifesto, that their intention was to reduce VAT by at least 2.5% and possibly 5% later on down the road. As the government got into office, they did, in fact, do that. But it's interesting that the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association has ventured into the realm of government Finance. policy. And in their position paper, for whatever reason, I, 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 I just can't understand. One of their requests is that the government reinstate the 2.5% VAT. So instead of VAT being, what's it now? 12.5% 12. 12. Mm -hmm. that the government should take it back that up to 15%. 15 That's the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Talking. Association. Yeah. The other recommendations were that the government increase excise tax on vehicles less than 1,800 cc's to be equivalent to those of over 1,800 cc's. That there be a 70% increase on excise tax of tobacco products that revert to pre-VAT rate of excise tax on alcohol or alternatively increase it even more to realize a $20 million rise in revenue. And that 5% tax on all processed foods, so sugared, salted, trans fat, high fat, etc., also, with all of these recommendations in their position paper, the government's goal is to reduce the burden mm -hmm. on the people of St. Lucia. But strangely enough, a medical association yeah. is advising the government to institute and reinstitute all these taxes here. Going further, on NIC contributions, they're advocating in this position paper at the highest level that NIC contributions be increased by 5%. <laughs> My goodness. So when people are wondering whether the SLMDA has become politicized or that they're venturing into the realm of policy, this sounds to me like government yep. at work. That's right. That's what it sounds like. So I, I, I really don't know. I, I really don't know. But that? hold on a second here. Further, in the recommendations on that position paper, in recommendation N, this is the funny thing, where the SLMDA said that they were working in the background. Yeah. They have not indicated anything that they've done in that background. Mm -hmm. But now, since elections, they're working in the foreground. Yeah. So listen to what N says. We strongly propose that amendments be made to the Millennium Heights Medical Complex Act, Complex Act Number 1 of 2015 and that the St. Jude's Hospital Act Number 7 of 2003 include and guarantee the St. Lucia Medical Dental Association a place on these boards. But... They're quoting the MHMC Act, the Millennium Heights Medical Complex Act Number 1 of 2015. But strangely, in 2015, they did not make this demand of the previous administration. Mm -hmm. The same people. Mm -hmm. So why not? Was it not in the interest of St. Lucians? Yeah. For you to be when the board, when the act was, when it was enacted, was it, did you not realize that you should have been on the board? Mm -hmm. And they make a whole list of demands to the government, venturing into the realm of policy. This is a medical and dental association. St. Lucians, I've given you the information. 
I've given you the evidence, the documentary evidence. I've given you the sequence of events. I've created, I've presented to you the analogies which would break it down and allow you to better understand, to better relate, to better brainstorm the SLMDA's position or the positions that they've taken and the actions that they've taken. And I, I, am, I can come to no other conclusion that the SLMDA, for whatever reason, has become politicized. Mm -hmm. And this is not me just staying, waking up one morning and deciding that out of the top of my head after I've looked on the sunshine of a new day. I didn't have a nightmare. I didn't have a dream. I was not influenced by anyone. But looking at the sequence of events, the lack of any participation, of any discussion, of any condemnation, of any demands, of any requests, of any whatever you want to call it, by the SLMDA between 2011 and 2016, the evidence of the number of posts on their website, the evidence of them not talking to the press, not being vocal on, on the news media, on social media, not even on their website, which they had full control over. But suddenly, magically, the SLMDA executive is now, with this new administration, they have now found their voice. They have now found their legs. In fact, there's something here that I want to quote that I almost forgot. It's posted on the SLMDA website and it's dated the 8th of May, 2018, just about a month and a half ago. And... In there, there it's uh, the story about the SLMDA invited to view for town hall meeting on healthcare crisis, and the invitation was supposedly from the View for Concerned Citizens Coalition for for Change. But in that press report, and you can find it on their website, I, I don't need to read the whole thing. In that press release, they said, and they quote, "It is particularly shocking to read." that St. Lucia's healthcare is in a state of crisis. The VF forces, the Viewfort Concerned Citizens Coalition for Change says, is it only last month that they realized that the state of healthcare in St. Lucia was in a crisis? It's, it's unbelievable. And the SLMDA is quoting that from another organization. So in 2015, 2014, Apparently, and the other years before that, apparently the SLMDA and other persons were in a coma. They were comatose. They were under the influence of something. But, you know, to top it off tonight, with all the press releases, the press statements by the SLMDA on their website, none of them ended with this statement, this last line of this press release from the 8th of May, 2018. And it says, or it reads, Disclosure. The SLMDA has no potential competing interests or conflict of interest to declare. Why would it be important to state this? Are there members of the SLMDA interested in providing any services to the healthcare discussion that we're having now? Why would this be placed at the bottom? Nobody ever accused anyone of having a conflict of interest. There was only a concern about the discussions or the direction that the SLMDA was having with the issue at hand. So I find it rather peculiar that the SLMDA, and I would suppose that the persons responsible for the statements on the SLMDA website would be the executive. Somebody on the executive would be responsible for that information yeah. and for press releases. And I will read that again. Disclosure. SLMDA has no potential competing interest or conflict of interest to declare. 
Did anybody say there was a conflict of interest? I don't know. But that's it for tonight, folks. I'd like to thank you very much for joining in. I appreciate the participation and look forward to you being here again with Keeping It Real. Hold on one second. Champagne wants to say something here. But no, but with with I, I'm looking at your desk here with all this information. You, I must say, I really admire you for getting all that information to the St. Lucian public. You have your laptop. You have all this information. I know you. The information you have, you didn't give everything out tonight. I know there's more. Well, I know I'll, there's I'll, more. I'll tell you what. I'm quite certain that this discussion will continue as the St. Jude's Hospital fiasco is far from concluded. But what? many people look forward to and i look forward to as well is the statement from the prime minister on the way forward mm -hmm. what there is going to be for health care health uh, national insurance whatever the decision is whatever the way forward is for st jude's hospital i am sure that is going to be coming pretty soon so we'll uh, say good night and i'd like to say thank you to our listeners in the uk i know it's late now it's what after two in the morning over there thank you to the listeners in pennsylvania who have been sending me messages our on callers. whatsapp and thank you very much to our callers we appreciate you calling and we'd like to encourage everyone to follow the example of being decent and respectful because we'd like to keep it real and we'd like our st lucian public to take it to a new level to a more respectful and factual basis in our discussions thank you very much saint lucia thank you very much all listeners until next week i'm norbert williams good night <laughs>